In the last video, we got the basic session-based authentication working and talked a little bit about the security-related topics like session fixation and hijacking. In today's video, we're going to get the currently logged in user entity and then persist it throughout the request so that we're able to access the currently logged in user object anywhere else within our code. So far, all we got is the user ID stored in the session. One way, of course, is to take the user ID from the session and then run the query to find the user based on the user ID every time we need it. But that is not a great solution because we don't want to run queries every time we need the authenticated user entity throughout the request. So instead, what we can do is that we can create a middleware that will handle the user authentication by looking up the user using the ID from the session and then attach that user entity to the request to be able to access via controller methods. So let's go in here and simply create a new middleware and we'll call this authenticate middleware. It needs to, of course, implement the middleware interface and it also needs to provide the process method implementation. Now, I know that the authenticate middleware may seem similar to auth middleware that we have right here in terms of naming, but the auth middleware basically just checks if the user is logged in or not. And if the user is not logged in, it simply redirects to the login page. The authenticate middleware, on the other hand, should simply authenticate the user from the session based on the user ID that's saved in the session which basically means to find a user by that user ID and then make it accessible throughout the request. So this means that we need access to the entity manager. So let's inject entity manager in the constructor. And within the process method, we can use the default entity repository to find the user by the user ID. Before that, we want to check to make sure that the user is actually logged in. So we can check the session here like this, and then we can create a user variable and find the user entity using the entity manager this way. We'll get the default user entity repository and call the method find. Now that we have the user entity, what we can do is that we can add this user to the request by using with attribute method. So we can call with attribute on the request object and simply add user to it. Now note that the request and response objects are value objects, which means that this method right here does not modify the request object. It simply creates a new request object. So for this to work, we need to assign this to a request variable. And then finally, we need to continue processing the request. So we can do return handler handle request. Now we need to register this middleware. So let's open the middleware config file. We'll register it right here. And now to test this out, if it works, we can dump the user ID from the home controller by accessing the user entity. So let's open the home controller. And then since we added the user to the request within the middleware, then this request should be able to get the attributes that were injected into the request object. So we can do user equals request get attribute user. And then we can simply do var dump user get id because the user is the user entity object now this may also return null if the user was not set we could use a null safe operator for this case so let's open the browser sign in with my user and sure enough we see that the user id is printed right here let's instead of printing the id print get name refresh the page and sure enough we're getting the username also notice this uh, user icon right here. If we click it, it shows the logout action. Currently it does not work and we're going to make this work by the end of this video. I added this UI behind the scenes, so I just wanted to let you know. All right, so let's go back to the authenticate middleware and improve it a little bit because I don't like the way this looks currently. It looks a little bit dirty. We are accessing the entity manager directly in our middleware. We are depending on the user entity and so on. Instead of using the entity manager directly, why don't we abstract this part away and use some sort of auth interface class. So we can replace the entity manager with something like auth interface. And within here, why don't we call some user method that gets the authenticated user from whatever the class implements that auth interface. In fact, we can actually improve this further and take this and pass this directly here 
and get rid of this and we don't even need to check for the session because we'll have that logic within the user method that gets the authenticated user so we can get rid of that and we can actually simply move this right here and get rid of this as well now it looks a lot simpler so let's create this auth interface i'm going to create a new namespace and a new directory called contracts and that's where i'm going to store all the interfaces or contracts for our application we know that this needs to have at least one function called user and this user function needs to return a user entity but the thing is i don't want to type hint this to a user entity because then we are kind of tied into the user entity specifically that's like being too specific and then we're going to have to access the entity manager and the user entity within whatever the class implements this auth interface so instead i want to use another interface that marks or makes user authenticatable now we could use authenticatable interface or we could keep it simple and call it user interface because in our application we're only going to be authenticating users and nothing else now we need to make this nullable because user may not be authenticated and therefore it can return null so let's create the user interface within the contracts namespace as well and this is the interface that the user entity is going to implement because we are authenticating users so let's open the user entity here and we're going to implement the user interface and a couple of methods that we can define within the user interface is the get id and get password because those are the methods that we're going to need for now so we'll do public function get id and public function get password and this returns string these methods are already implemented within the user entity so we don't have to do anything in here because we already have the get id and we already have the get password all right so let's close this out and let's get rid of this as well and now we need to create a class that implements the auth interface we can create maybe an auth class within the app directory so we can put it right here called auth.php and this is going to implement the auth interface and let's provide the implementation for the user method let's also create the constructor and we'll inject the entity manager here for now because we need to look up the user based on the id the same way we did it in the middleware but we're kind of doing that within the auth class so let's do private read only entity manager entity manager and we also want to keep track of the user instance within this class so that means we should create the user property here and type hint this to user interface we can make this nullable and set it to null by default now to implement the user method we first need to check if the user is already set which means that if this user property is already set that means that user has been authenticated previously so we can just return that Otherwise, if the user property is not set, then we can extract the user ID from the session and then try to authenticate the user using that user ID. Now, at this point, we know that we have the user ID in the session. So that means that we can look up the user using the entity manager and the default user entity repository the same way we did it before. So we can do user equals this entity manager, get repository, user, and then simply call find and pass the user id to it now we also need to add an additional check here if the user for some reason is not found by the given user id maybe it was deleted or deactivated or something like that in that case we can return null so we can check if not user return null otherwise we know that the user was found so we can set the user to the user property and then return the current user object all right so now we need to make sure to bind the auth interface within our container because we want to be able to inject auth interface somewhere else in the code if we wanted to and then access the user method because otherwise in our middleware this is not going to work because our container does not know the default implementation of the auth interface so let's open container bindings and add auth interface in here and we'll inject the container interface in here and we'll get the auth class from the container all right so let's go back to the authenticate middleware let's get rid of this and this looks good i think this is going to work it should work the same way as it did before so let's open the browser let's refresh the page 
and as you can see we get the username printed on the screen on the home page all right so this is great we've started creating and using the interfaces that we covered earlier in this series let's see what else we can clean up and improve in our code since we are using the auth class now i think we can also extract the login part from the auth controller so we could extract some of these parts from here into the auth class for example, this part right here doesn't need to be in the controller. We can extract this within the auth class. We can maybe instead of doing all of this, let me take that out. We could inject the auth interface in the constructor and then call some method like attempt login and pass the credentials as an argument. So let's inject the auth interface in our constructor here. Private read only auth interface and let's create the attempt login method we're going to add that to the interface and we'll use the array for now and this will return boolean let's add this method to our implementation here and we're going to paste in the code that i copied before in here instead of throwing the validation exception we can simply return false and then return true otherwise right here and we can also set the user object to user this way now if we go back to auth controller we can check here if the attempt login was successful and if it wasn't successful then we can throw the validation exception within here that way we're not using validation exception within our auth class i want the attempt login method to return boolean instead of throwing exceptions all right let's go back to the auth class in here within the attempt login method and i think we can do something better here i think we can extract this part into its own method that way we may reuse that method somewhere else if we wanted to check and verify if user has entered the correct password so instead of this maybe we can do something like this check credentials and we could pass the user entity here and the credentials and then have the check credentials be responsible for checking and verifying the user password so let's create this method we'll make this public and we have to add this to the interface as well and let's return the password verify check and this is going to be user interface and this will be credentials and i actually want to change this data from data to credentials so let's do that and this looks good enough let's take this and add it to the interface so we have it here as well and i think that's good enough now before we test this out i want to also implement the logout functionality so that we can test out both of the things at the same time so let's go to the auth controller here and we need to fill in this part right here the logout functionality is actually pretty simple to implement because we just have to unset the user from the session and then set the user object to null within the auth class so we could call some sort of logout method on the auth class and implement this within the auth class so let's add that to the interface this is not going to return anything and then let's implement that in our auth class and we're simply going to unset the session user and we're also going to set the user to null and that should be good enough let's test this out now so let's go to the home page let's refresh everything is working let's try to log out and as you can see that is working as well because the logout action just makes a post request to the logout endpoint which connects to the logout method in the auth controller and then we're calling the logout on the auth class which unsets the session and clears out the user property let's log back in to make sure that the login part still works and sure enough that works as well all right i think we can do something better let's see what else we can improve here i kind of don't like uh, accessing the entity manager and the user entity this way within the auth class for the same reason i didn't want to depend on the user entity within the auth interface and that's why we created the user interface otherwise i could have just returned the user entity here I don't want our auth class to know anything about the database or the entity manager or entities. I want this to work regardless of the ORM. So instead of injecting the entity manager, why don't we inject some sort of class that provides the user related methods? What if instead of find method here, we call it something like this user provider and then get by ID or find by ID. And then within the attempt login method, instead of doing this, we could do something like this user provider get by credentials. And we could simply pass 
the credentials down directly. So let's change the entity manager to user provider and we'll type in this to a new class that we're going to create. So we can inject maybe user provider service interface and let's create this class within the contracts. And we know that this has to have two methods. So let's create these methods. First is get by ID and this is going to return the user interface. Let's change this from mixed to integer. And then we also have the get by credentials and this will also return the user interface. Now these have to be nullable because user might not be found. Now let's create the user provider service class that implements this interface. First, we need to bind this in our container. So let's go to container bindings and simply duplicate this line here and we'll replace auth interface with the user provider service interface. Let's import that. And this is going to get some sort of user provider service. Now I'm going to create this class within the services directory. And I want you to note that you don't have to follow the same structure. If you want to create an auth directory and put all the auth related classes within there, feel free to do so. It is up to you and mostly down to preference. And now we need to provide the implementations for this. And for this, we will need the entity manager because this user provider service can have access to the entity manager. If we wanted to have another service that provides the user that doesn't have access to the entity manager, maybe provides user from something else like a memory or something for unit tests, we could simply create user provider from memory service and implement the same interface and define these methods. So let's add private read-only entity manager. And we're going to simply do return this entity manager get repository and then call the find method on it or we could also call find method directly on the entity manager but this one requires the class name to be passed as the first argument so we'll do user entity and then the second argument is the user id then for the get by credentials we need to return this entity manager get repository user entity and then find one by and pass the email criteria here. Now one other improvement that we could have done here is instead of using this array and accessing the magical key email, we could use DTOs or value objects. For now though, I want to stick with arrays to keep things simple, but later we might use DTOs or value objects depending on the use case. All right, so let's test this out to see if everything is working. Let's refresh the page here and we're getting an error stating that no entry class was found for the user provider service. Did I forget to bind this in the container? Uh, let me open the code, go to container bindings. And no, we bind it correctly here, unless the user provider service was created under a different directory for some reason. Let's open this services. Yeah, it doesn't have services in there. So where was it created? It was created under configs. So container. Yeah, so it created it here. I probably messed up the creation in the dialog that popped up here. Probably selected the wrong uh, directory or something. So let's move this here. Let's delete this directory. And I think that should fix it. Let's refresh the page. Yeah, and now we're good. Let's log out. That works. Let's log back in. And that works as well. All right, so I think we've done some good refactoring here, but we're not done yet. We'll do some more refactoring in the next lesson. I don't like accessing the sessions this way within our auth class. I don't like accessing the sessions directly using the session super global. It would be better if we had some sort of simple abstraction around the sessions so that we could inject the session provider within the constructor anywhere we need the sessions. So thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I'll see you in the next one.